What is up, Sooner Nation? I'm Casey Mallon, and you're now in a Sooner state of mind. This is your new home for everything OU football. Make sure you subscribe to Sooner State of Mind on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, or go to Believe.com. That's B-L-E-A-V.com. Go to shows, type in Sooner State of Mind, and it's right there for you. you got a ton of great shows, every team, every topic, everywhere, Believe.com. Oh, baby. Mm. This is like my third cup of coffee. I'm so fired up. I want to remind you guys, if you want to watch Sooner State of Mind, head over to YouTube, search the football dudes, and the shows will be right there. Like and subscribe. We appreciate you giving us those great reviews. Like I said, this might be my third cup of coffee, but I'm in a good mood today, baby. I can't help myself. I'm falling stone in love. I would not feel so all alone. Everybody must get stoned. It is officially time to get stone cold crazy. You know what I'm talking about, people. Over the weekend, OU got its first win of the season without playing a game. That's because five-star defensive lineman David Stone committed to the Sooners class of 24. And this is a huge get for BV and Coach Bates and went right down to the wire, but they were able to get it done. David Stone, man, this guy looks like he could be the real deal for IMG Academy last season. Six foot four, 280 pound. David Stone, baby, 50 tackles, 26 solo, 18 TFLs, five sacks, nine quarterback pressures, man. Wait till this cat gets a summer messing with Schmitty. Ooh, gonna put on a little muscle at his teammate Jaden Jackson dude that's almost 600 pounds of beef on that D line man BV and company recruiting molding this roster getting it ready for the jump to the SEC man I am completely pumped and that's not our only five star PJ out of Barre Peyton Bowen Jackson Arnold, man, we are getting some players, dude. Completely stoked. And adding Stone moves our 2024 class up to 11. This one goes to 11. Man, and there might be more players to come. This is an exciting time to be a Sooner. Oh, let's drink to that, people. Mm. This is one of my prized possessions. If you're watching, you get to see this. If not... And you're just listening. Maybe this will move you to go to watch the show. But this is my my Casey coffee mug. And I love it. And I love coffee. I drink a lot of coffee. So any sponsors out there want to get on the show, hit us up. SSOMhost at gmail.com. There's room for you. So the recruiting stuff is all great. But the best news is we actually have a Sooners game this weekend. In the next episode, we'll preview the game versus Arkansas State as well as some of the biggest games coming up this weekend. It's not even a weekend. It's going to be a four-day event starting on Thursday night. We have games Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I'm not a numbers guy. I think that's five days. So it's going to be completely awesome. But we'll get you all dialed in for the Arkansas State game. But before we get to all that, we're going to take a look at OU's schedule for the upcoming 2023 season last year. Six and seven. This is the last time we're going to talk about it. We are officially moving on, people. Putting 2022 behind us. Like I said, week one versus Arkansas State. We're going to dive into that in the next episode, but I'm going to go ahead and chalk that up as a W. You're going to find out watching this show that I am an optimist. I like to see the glass half full. Um, I don't think I'm going out on a limb counting that as a dub. Still have to show up, but... I'm giving that to my Sooners. All right. Up next, week two, September 9th, versus SMU. Um, This is a replacement series for the home and away. We were supposed to play against Georgia before the move uh, to the new conference came about. Um, The Sooners and the Mustangs have played seven times. OU has a 5-1-1 record against those ponies. Two sides haven't played since 95, a 24-10 win. For the Sooners, baby. So that is good news. All right. Up next, week three, September 16th. That's at Tulsa. Sorry, Tulsa bros. 
sitting at 0 and 8 versus the Sooners. And in the last meeting, 2015, Sooners won that one 52 to 38. Um, let's extend the streak to nine. I'm looking forward to it. All right. So that's the non conference schedule. Arkansas State, SMU, and Tulsa should be sitting at 3 0. Moving in to our first Big 12 game and our last Big 12 season opening game. This one's at Cincy. And the last played uh, in 2010, the Sooners won that one, 31 to 29. That's when Cincy was still in the Big East. Game was a lot closer than it should have been. Sooners got it done late in that one. Um, a very weird and sketchy game. Remember parts of it. I think uh, since he had a big return, maybe an interception and a punt. Anyways, Sooners ended up getting that one. This could be a trap game. Since he's first uh, taste of the Big 12, want to come out and make a statement. You know the Big 12 would love to stick it to the Sooners. Um, they're going to have to show up and play well. I think they'll do that. Like I said, it could be a trap game, but I expect them to be able to get this one. Sooners 4-0 on the season, 1-0 in Big 12 play. Up next, week five, Sooners, Big 12 um, home opener. That is versus Iowa State. And last year, the Sooners won that game 27-13. to Iowa State's given us some problems the last few years, got out to some big leads, watched some of those big leads dwindle and turn into losses. That wasn't the case last year. Um, they've got some issues at Iowa State with some of the gambling stuff there. So, um Sooners should be able to handle their business in this one. Move to 2-0 in the Big 12. Looking good and feeling good. That brings us to the Week 6 game. You guys know who it is. October 7th at the Texas State Fair versus Texas. Those horns put a beat down on us last year, 49-0. No Dylan Gabriel in that game last year. No vertical threat in that game last year. A bunch of running the football for the Sooners. Revenge needs to happen in a good way in this game. We need to dominate these uh, Texas Longhorns there. Um, they've gotten a little too cocky about that win, thinking, oh, we beat a 6-17 and 17 bad. Oh, that was something. They didn't have a quarterback. If that's their biggest win, if that's like their national championship game, let them have it. It's going to be a whole different deal this year. If everything works out, Dylan Gabriel's going to get to play in this game, and hopefully by the end of it, he's going to be wearing that that golden cowboy hat. But, you know, OU Texas is why you come to Oklahoma or go to Texas for that matter. Gabriel didn't get to play in this game last year. He had to watch from the sidelines, kind of helpless, seeing the team struggle like it did. He knows the impact of this game. He knows how big it is. He wants to play in this game, and I can't wait to see it happen. And you know what? I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I am guaranteeing to you people that B. John Robinson will not be in this game. That's going to go a long way towards helping the Sooners be more competitive in this one. He ran all over him last year. Um, I can kind of root for that guy now that he's in the NFL. Um, he's an exciting player. He won't be in this one, and that is good news for the Sooners. Um Hopefully we rock a W in that one and we're rolling into week seven, which is a bye week to kind of get healthy there. So, um, you know, in my in my world, we're still undefeated in this season, baby. I like to look at it that way. Why not? We're putting it out into the universe, our collective consciousness of the Sooner Nation, Sooner State of Mind doing work here. People were making things happen collectively. We lead the Sooners to a dub. Enjoy that off week and come back for week eight, October 21st, first UCF. This is the first meeting between the teams. We'll obviously dive into this game much deeper during the season. Dylan Gabriel getting a piece of the old team, baby. It'll be interesting to see how that one goes. We should have plenty enough uh, to beat UCF coming off of a bye week. If for some reason we lost that Texas game, we're going to be angry, but hopefully we're still riding the high at beating those short horns. And um, this could be a trap game, depending how that goes, but they'll have a week to settle with the bye. So they should have plenty to handle um, UCF in that one. So, hey, 
We're still rocking an undefeated season. How sweet is that? I'm loving it. I know you are too. That leads us to week nine, October 28th. That's at Kansas. And this was last year. Oh, you won that game 52 to 42. And it was one of the better wins on the season for the Sooners. Kind of a game they were able to put it all together. But you go back to 2021. And we needed that Sooner magic just to beat those Jayhawks. Caleb Williams stealing the fourth and one that would have been short from Kennedy Brooks and running it, picking up that first, sealing the win. That was an epic game. Hopefully this one is not that close and we run away from those Jayhawks, but they are turning it around. Once we leave the conference, I'll be rooting for these guys um, to keep getting better. This is going to be a fun game and you better watch out so you don't lose it because if they're looking forward, that could be a trap game too with those Jayhawks, but hopefully it's not. Back-to-back road games. This one coming a little sooner than we thought it would. Week 10, November 4th. At Oklahoma State, the last bedlam of both of these teams being in the Big 12. Last year, OU won 28-13, came out on fire. I think it was like three straight scoring drives, maybe even four to open that thing up. Looked like we were going to bury those fools by 70 points, and then the offense just shut down and couldn't get anything going. Luckily for us, the defense was great in that game. And they were able to beat those pokes. But you know, Gundy's going to have these cats fired up for this game. This is OSU's national championship. They want to send the Sooners to the SEC with a big, fat Bedlam L. It's going to be in Stillwater. Might be a night game. In the past, these stupid pokes have beaten the Sooners when they've had no business doing so. Took us out of the natty running a couple of times. As lopsided as this series has been, OSU has been able to steal a couple of victories when they really needed it, when it's looked like they had no chance of winning those games. Let's make sure that doesn't happen here. Let's end Bedlam the way it's always been with a big fat Sooners W. And, you know, hopefully next time we see these cats, it will be in a college football playoff. How sweet would that be? Hosting these pokes next year? 2024 college football playoff. That would be outstanding. Got a soft spot for these pokes. My sister went to school there. Got a lot of friends that went there, even though I never root for these guys when they're playing the Sooners. I root for them to have success when it is not against OU. But other than that, um, yeah, I'd like to see them do well. But not on November 4th, baby. We're going to beat down those stupid pokes. Mm. I might be the caffeine people, but I'm getting so fired up. It might just be that college football is back and I'm completely stoked about it. So right now we're still rocking an undefeated season. Rolling into week 11. This one goes to 11 too. Week 11, November 11th, hosting West Virginia. Last year, those Mountaineers won 23 to 20. Very frustrating game. Had so many opportunities in that game to get the dub just mistakes penalties oh it was ugly and it was very frustrating and we really let one get away on that just didn't put enough points on the board to beat west virginia last year um not a lot of expectation for the mountaineers there picked to uh finish close to the bottom of the big 12 they're going to use that as motivation And this could be another trap game coming off back-to-back road games. Depending what happens against OSU, they could be looking past this West Virginia squad and uh, they could sneak in there and play some good football. I don't see that happening, but, um, you know, we're projecting two and a half months from now. So who the hell knows what's going to happen, but I'm still giving our Sooners a W in that one. Week 12, November 18th. At BYU. This is a game I'm actually thinking about trying to get to. I have some friends in Utah. The setting is going to be amazing. It's going to be a cold winter game. They're going to be fired up to play the Sooners. And shockingly, they've only played twice, but the Sooners have never beaten BYU. And the last time they played was in 29. I remember it well. I was coming home from Burning Man. 
only to find out that OU lost 14 to 13. But not only that, Sam Bradford was knocked out of that game. And that was coming off the disappointing loss in the national championship from the previous year to the stupid Florida Gators. Lots of expectation on that Sooners team. Bradford goes down with it, the hopes of getting back to the national championship. We have to exact extract some revenge on these BYU Cougs. Um, their first taste of OU as a divisional foe or conference foe, I should say. And hopefully we go down there and um, smack those Cougs, baby. Oh, going into week 13 undefeated. How sweet is that? Our first Friday game, week 13, Friday, November 24th, the day after Thanksgiving. You're not going to be shopping. You're going to be sitting home watching our Sooners versus TCU, those Horn Frogs. Oh, man. Last year, they beat down the Sooners 55-24. to That was the game we lost Dylan Gabriel, lost him early. And I don't know if it would have mattered if he played in that game because that TCU team was a monster. Max Duggan taking over for Chandler Morris, who got hurt, was going to be the starter, but Duggan stepped in, led them to an undefeated regular season. They did lose in the Big 12 championship, but um, what a great team. Quentin Johnston running away from guys, mossing all our defenders. Kendra Miller running over our guys. Man, this game, I remember last year just watching, I was like, oh, TCU, a bunch of bullies, man. This is a squad. That was a tough physical squad, and they beat the crap out of us. It's not often that you see your team just get physically dominated. That happened last year in this. So lots to play for um, for the OU team. Dylan Gabriel is going to have a ton to play for in this one, too. They have You have to have a short memory as a football player, but not that short. They are going to want to take a out on TCU. And, you know, I'm not sure how TCU is going to be this year. They lost a lot of players to the NFL. I mentioned most of them um, in the guys that did damage to us. But Chandler Morris, he's an exciting quarterback. So um, our undefeated season will be on the line week 13. But guess what? We get that W and we move into the Big 12 championship undefeated. Um, likely opponent, probably be Kansas State. That's what the speculation is. Don't have to play them in the regular season. Don't have to play Tech in the regular season. So there's a chance we could see one of those guys in the Big 12 championship. But you know what? We're riding the undefeated season. We're going to go ahead and beat uh, whoever we play in the Big 12 championship and have two more games. And hopefully we win both of those undefeated season. Oklahoma Sooners, national champions, leaving the Big 12 going to the SEC with that trophy, with all the praise, with all the glory. Oh, it's going to be exciting times. Yeah, I'm a Sooner optimist. That's what the Sooner state of mind is, knowing, believing that we can win every game, and we're going to win a lot of games this year, and hopefully we win them all. And uh, until we haven't, then that dream is still alive, and that's a good thing. All right. Week zero last week. Let's go ahead and recap a couple of of those games. Bono, Shane McGowan sharing a Guinness in Dublin. Pretty good time as they watch Notre Dame stomp Navy 42-3. Man, that game was all Notre Dame. They ran all over them boys. They passed all over them boys too. And in the way too early but getting his name in the Heisman race, Sam Hartman, the transfer from Wake, man, he, this guy was almost perfect. 19 to 23, 251 yards, four touchdowns. It could have been worse, but I don't know that he could have played better. A great game. Uh, Freeman stoked to see the way his domers um, start this season. And if Hartman continue to play like that and they continue to run like that, um, Notre Dame could be in the mix. It'll be interesting to see how well that defense does against some better competition, but what a great, great way to start this season for Notre Dame. Speaking of Heisman contenders, Caleb Williams and the USC Trojans beat San Jose State 56-28. to Maybe a little closer than you would expect, but you should win every game when you score 56 points. 
Caleb Williams, once again, sick AF, 18-25, 278 yards, four passing touchdowns. Um, someone's going to have to play out of their mind to knock this guy out of the uh, the Heisman race. It looks like Arizona is already tanking for Caleb, crash for Caleb. Man, they are doing everything to line themselves up for that first overall pick. Um, Caleb has said he's not necessarily going to the NFL. He's going to the NFL. Why wouldn't you? He's making a ton of money already, so maybe he stays another year. I highly doubt it. Zachariah Branch, one of the most exciting freshmen in the country, making a name for himself. He had a TD reception and a kickoff return for a touchdown. This guy is lightning in a bottle. Looks impressive out there. They're going to find some great ways to use this guy. You know, Tebow will figure out how to get this guy uh, the ball in all different kinds of ways. It is going to be fun to watch if you can stomach watching USC play football. But there's always a but. All my friends have a big but. USC gave up almost 200 rushing yards and three passing touchdowns to San Jose State University. Trojan fan is already starting to grumble about Grinch. They want him out of there. They want him gone. You know, SC did play a bunch of young guys in this game. So it's not like that was a defense we're going to see later in the season. Um, And it's just the first game. Teams get better. They figure out how to gel. There will be some improvement there. But wouldn't it be a shame to waste such a prolific offense with an offensive defense they can't get a stop that you need 56 points to beat. Man, a great offense with a bad defense. Hmm. I wonder, where have we heard that before? Have we seen that anywhere? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Hmm. Anyways, Notre Dame hosting SC on October 14th. Maybe both these teams are undefeated going into that one. Oh, it's going to be a great game no matter what. Hopefully those guys are both undefeated going into that, and um, it has a major impact on the college football playoff. But lots of football to come between them. We have a ton of stuff happening before we even get to week six, but that will be a good one. And speaking of good ones, you're a good one. You guys are good ones for checking out the show. I really appreciate it. I want to thank you for being part of Sooner State of Mind. You got questions or comments. The Sooners going undefeated this year. What do you think their record's going to be? You got some comments for the show? Hit us up at ssomhost at gmail.com. Let us know your thoughts and concerns. And like and subscribe to Sooner State of Mind on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Next episode, people, just a couple short days away, we'll get into the official depth chart. The game versus Arkansas State and some of the biggest games coming up week one of the college football season. Oh, it's the best time of the year. I really love September. I really love the Sooners. That's why I am always in a Sooner state of mind. And hopefully you are too. My name is Casey Mellon. Thanks for hanging out. We will catch you next time. Have a great weekend, people.